five-game homestead will begin tonight against the Columbus Blue Jacket team that has lost a couple of close ones to the Detroit Red Wings and the Boston Bruins, and they come in here tonight. It's one of those potential trap games where a team comes home after a long, successful road trip, and they try to get it going against a team like Columbus. Here are your starting goalies. Carey Price has stopped 75 of the last 76 shots he has faced in the last two games. It's 987 save percentage over that span. And Sergei Bobrovsky, the Vezina Trophy winner from last season, who got off to a slow start but has been excellent in the last four games. Well, these two guys can win games on their own. Their stats prove it. And they're two top goaltenders in the National Hockey League, and they're going to be relied upon, especially Bobrovsky. We talked a little bit about the way the Montreal Canadiens coming back from a road trip. That first game might be a little bit of the, the jitters. But I think a guy like P.K. Subban is going to make sure that doesn't happen. A veteran player in the National Hockey League now, he's been getting better game in and game out. And he knows when his team comes back from these trips that the, the first game can be a tough one. And I would expect Subban to step up right away in this game and really try to lead the charge on the offense. Montreal's leading scorer, he and Dustin Bufflin are the only two defensemen in the National Hockey League in this early stage of the season to lead their respective teams in scoring. The referees are Gisland Hebert and Francois Saint Laurent, Derek Amel and Matt McPherson are the linesmen. Michelle Terrien is going to start a line of Thomas Placanis, Brandon Prust, and Brian Gionta with Subban and Markov. And here's a chance right away for the captain. Quick shot, rebound, and it's going to be cleared by Columbus. How's that for a start for Brian Gionta, who has two points, both in the same game. There's another great save, and a rebound goes in behind Price. Artemi Nisimov got his stick on that one. And here we are, 20 seconds into the game, and two close calls at either end. Talking about how good the goaltenders are going to be and have to be. You said it 20 seconds in, they both made outstanding stops. Columbus fired 37 shots on the Detroit net two nights ago. In the losing cause, here's Subban. One shoots right on, and Bobrovsky, out to challenge the shooter, makes the stop. And behind the net is Michael Bourne involved. Set as it comes to the line, and this will come out. Wow, what a start, Dave Bobrovsky way out on top of his crease on that last shot as Subban walked in from the blue line all sorts of time. Wide open start to this game. Both teams concentrating on defense, but not so far. Number 13 for Columbus is Cam Atkinson on the four check. Can't contain it, and Montreal rushes back the other way. Born the ball into the line, and Bobrovsky is not going to take any chances. He's going to slow things down after a pretty frantic minute in the opening stage of the first period. I, I love this face-off. Push forward and Press quickly throws it to Giantu. Just takes it to the net. Gets a great shot. Bobrovsky leaving the rebound. And then give Columbus credit. Umberger takes it right back the other way. And another great stop by Carey Price in low. And then it was P.K. Subban walking right down the pipe with a blast from the point on Bobrovsky again. Three great stops. And we're only about a minute and a half into this game. Subban had five shots on net. Tuesday night against the Winnipeg Jets. He leads the team with 23 shots so far. And he's always firing bucks at the net every chance he can get. Well, Michelle Therrien there. We just saw a good shot of a young defenseman. Jared Tenorti, Michelle Therrien is going to give his young defenseman lots of opportunities to be in and out of the lineup. And Tenorti is one of them. He got the call. Big, strong, solid defender for the Habs. Brendan Gallagher lost that face off in the offensive zone. There's Francis Bouillon along the back end. He turns 38 years young today. And behind the net, walking out was Galchenyuk and couldn't get it up on his forehand for the shot. Gallagher looking back for a call there. Jerry Tenorti steps up and hammers Blake Como. Nathan Bolio is the scratch tonight on the back end. Tenorti gets back into the lineup after he was a scratch against the Jets. Number 58 is David Savard, whose hometown is about 40 minutes outside of downtown Montreal and St. Hyacinth. Grew up in Quebec City and is a plus three to start the season for Todd Richards in the back end. Very excited to play his first game in the Bell Center in Montreal. Spent the whole summer in Columbus training and it's all paid off. Great, Todd Richards had great things to say about the work ethic. He made a nice Davis pass Savard. to get Montreal back into its own zone, but here they come back up the other way. Here's Daniel Briere up to Lenny Bourne. 
Bork and shoots that goes off a skating in behind the net. Bork, who it's going to be a game time decision to not take the morning skate. Suffering from the flu, but he's good to go tonight and almost got a shot on net there. That's two season. Marion Gabrick came in the day of the game in Detroit. They weren't even going to play. Played that game and then I was sick yesterday and is sick again today. And Gabrick has got the flu and he is out. Brennan Gallagher wasn't very happy that he didn't get a penalty. And you see Michelle Terrian is talking about it should have been a four-minute penalty. And we're going to have a look. Gallagher reaches in. You can see an inadvertent stick by Sean Collins playing his first game of the season for the Blue Jackets. Catches Gallagher right in the face. Pretty obvious. But both referees didn't see it. Gallagher was leading right away trying to get the draw for the penalty. Better tooting with a blast into traffic off the faceoff win as Columbus goes with its fourth line on the ice. This is the line that Todd Richards likes to use to raise the temperature a bit. Jared Bowl, Derek McKenzie, and Ryan Craig is number 12. McKenzie, number 24. He and Bowl are the longest serving members of this Columbus Blue Jacket team. Here's Placanis. In front, right in is Gianta. He's had two great chances here in the opening three and a half minutes. Columbus is very poor defensively, giving up some great opportunities. And this is a team that does not normally play this way. They're usually a very shut down, very difficult team to play against. But Montreal Canadiens are using their speed to generate some very good scoring opportunities. Giants had two great ones. RJ Umberger picks that puck loose, couldn't walk in and get a shot away. Bourneval took it away from him. Ryan White on his back end. Travis Bowen chases it after it against Ryan Murray. A good-looking young defenseman for this Columbus team. Second overall pick in 2012. He's out there with his partner James Wisniewski, the former Montreal Canadian. Here comes PK dancing it over line. Subban up high, looking for a lane. Subban it drops it off, and that one-timer by Eller just missed high and wide. Penalty call coming up. It's going to be a slash against the Blue Jackets. And Montreal will get the opening power play of the game. P.K. Subban is a dynamic player. And he just held this puck across the blue line, waited, 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 tried to set up. I like the way he tried to change the angle of the shot. But you can see the stick comes in and he draws that penalty. But P.K. Subban, boy, oh boy, he has got lots of jump in this game from the back end. Two great rushes, great opportunities so far. Montreal's power play started the season going 0 for 4 in the season opener against the Toronto Maple Leafs. They scored one power play goal in every game since. And here's Bork in scores! Subban with a long stretch pass to Bork. And he buries it. one nothing, Montreal. Well, that should make Rene Bork feel a little better. But look at this pass. That's a fantastic National Hockey League pass. That doesn't get any better. On the tape in full stride. Deep in your own zone to the blue line. And Bork makes no mistake. Fantastic wrist shot as he puts it by Bobrovsky. But what a great play by P.K. Subban. Subban draws the penalty by hanging onto the puck and then an excellent pass to set up Rene Bork with a nice power play goal to start this game off for the Montreal Canadiens. We talked about it before the game, but guy like Rene Bork, you know, he might struggle, he's going to keep his shift short. I was like, you know what, I've seen guys do that before and they come out and get three goals because they keep it simple and he's got one already. What? He's got the flu? Perfect. One flu. 17 seconds into that power play. Bork gets his second of the season. Subban now has a six-game point streak. How about that? Two goals and seven assists in the last six games. And this one's early. Here's a chance right in. Behind Price is cleared. Jones in with a shot. Price with a save. And the rebound goes into the corner as Columbus tries to answer right back. As I told you, the Blue Jackets are not an offensive juggernaut. Not yet, anyway. There's... Winner two, number 51, Atkinson picks up the loose puck in behind the net. He's met by Josh Georges, and Georges tries to put it up the boards, but Columbus still on it. Here's Boone Jenner. Jenner took a shot, blocked by Georges, and then he is run over by the rookie Jenner. 
This is a great pushback shift by the Columbus Blue Jackets. They've scored on the power play and a long bomb pass, and then they get the puck deep. They take pucks to the net, and then the rookie, Boone Jenner, just imposes his will as he just absolutely pulls over his opponent in the defensive zone. Jenner seeing first line duty with Gabor Gagalot up. He started the season on the top line. He's just 20 years of age. Had 45 goals and 82 points for the Oshawa Generals last season. Inside the line, Colin Corners Markov to Subban. Back to Andre Markov. Markov to Subban. Backs up, spins around, and gives it over to Markov. Markov here finds the late man coming in. It's Bork. Bork into the corner for Galchenyuk. Montreal's got Columbus standing still here in its own end. Finally, they relieve the pressure. That's Umberger banking it off the boards and it's quickly picked up and moved back by Subban. Subban is on fire to start this game. Just keeps it deep. In behind the net for Moen. Quick shot, Charbello, and another one. And Grabowski was right there to make the stop. Great heads up play by P.K. Subban, realizing that Columbus was in trouble and trying to get a line team. Quickly turned the puck up and attacked the zone. In front again for Mullen. Great kick saved by Bobowski, who is under siege. Shots are 8-6 already for Montreal. Here's Nikita Nikita. Just jumps it into open ice and behind the net. John Collins is number 43. He's down low with Blake Como, and it comes up the boards to the line and out. Savard almost gets it in. Controlled by Travis Mullen to keep his game on, or keep himself on the puck as the puck popped out to the middle of the ice. He said to reach out to clear the zone. Bouillon up to Mullen. Mullen dumps it in there. Back to get it is center two. He'll escape the puck. David Dernay trying to put it back to the blue line, and that was intercepted by McKenzie and sent back into the Montreal zone. Here's Rafael Diaz. McKenzie on the loose puck. As Ryan Craig circling around in front, but he couldn't get it to him. Hotsman back there is Diaz, takes the hit, makes the play, moves it up the boards, but it's pinned there by the hard-working fourth line of the Blue Jackets. Daniel Briere, who started the Winnipeg game on the fourth line, was quickly elevated. Price makes the save and hangs on. There's the game's only goal scored, a fast-paced start to this game in Montreal tonight. To a six-game point streak, he didn't score in the first game of the season, but P.K. Subban is bringing it for the Montreal Canadiens this evening, and this has been a, a display of skill. Shots, passing, rushes by P.K. Subban. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep this pace up for a full 60 minutes. And did we mention that his contract is up <laughs> after this season? <laughs> oh, they much we, talked we, about Briggs' deal that he signed to get back out onto the ice. The Canadian said, you know what, P.K., just go out there, do your thing, give us a couple more good years, yeah, and we'll no see. Problem. Then then we'll talk. Well, he's won the Norris Trophy in the shortened season, and he is... Off to a tremendous start here this season. Well, he'll be looking, he'll no question, he'll be looking for the max, and he deserves it. He'll be right up there with top defense for the National Hockey League. And if I tell you, if he wins the Norris Trophy again, he might want to wait to the end of the season the way he's playing right now. Two Norris Trophies will go a long way to be the highest paid player in the back end of the National Hockey League. And it's well deserved. Here's Brandon Press trying to center the bouncing puck, and Deontay waiting for it, could get a shot away. Here's Jack Johnson. Number seven for Columbus. He will play a lot tonight. He always does. Here is James Wisniewski, who two seasons ago played just 43 games for Montreal. But I'll tell you what, what a 43 games it was after he was acquired mid-season from the New York Islanders. He really ignited the power play here at the Bell Center. Oh, he's great offensive ability, and that's what he brings to the Columbus Blue Jackets from the back end. He can really make plays, not in that upper level defenseman, but he can make the plays with the best of Josh George just looking for the quick up to Gallagher. It was in the traffic. He keeps it moving to Lars Eller. Eller into the corner. He has been there by Wisniewski. Ryan Murray, his young rookie partner, comes in to help out to try to dig it free, and he does. Back to the line for Georges. His shot goes off the skate of Gallagher and into the corner. 
Back into open ice again for Wisniewski. Hard off the glass and outside the line. Columbus now into the Montreal zone looking for Anisimov with a centering pass. Ryan Johansson is down there along with R.J. Umberger. Umberger with a very memorable playoff run with the Flyers back in 2008. That included a, an excellent performance in the series against the Canadians. Here's Johansson, fourth overall pick, a first rounder for the Blue Jackets. Bouillon up to David Dernay, trying to work it up those boards. And it rolls into the Columbus zone. Back forward is David Savard. And Savard was drafted by Columbus. The draft was held right here, the Bell Center. That's exciting when you get that opportunity in your hometown to go to the draft and then be selected. And this is his first game back. And David Savard, first game to play from the Bell Center against the Montreal Canadiens. Former Moncton Wildcat reader. Here's Collins now trying to force his way in front. The Saskatoon native lost his footing. Como comes in there to help out. These guys will grind it out along the edge. And finally, here comes Bork, the only goal scorer we have so far tonight. Past the midway mark of a frantic first period here. So keep it out and slow down just a little bit, but they couldn't keep up that pace all night long. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. And that's not Columbus's game. They play the game we just saw down deep below the goal line to use their size and their strength to wear opposition teams out and wait to capitalize on the opportunities that they generate from below the goal line. Michael Bourne of ball spins away from the pressure of Jack Johnson. Markov goes across to Subban. Makes one move, then another springs Markov. Pass the cross, scores! A beauty makes it two. with his first NHL goal. Well, this is one for Michael Bourneval to remember. He'll never forget a beautiful one-timer, beautifully set up by two of the top defensemen in the National Hockey League. It's Subban to Markov to Bourneval, and he makes no mistake scoring on the Vezina Trophy winner from last season, Sergei Bobrovsky. Congratulations to Michael Bourneval. He's had some excellent games with the Montreal Canadiens. He's been a real pleasant surprise for the Habs this season. And he's finally rewarded for all that hard work with his first National Hockey League goal. And it was an absolute beauty. Great one-timer for Bourneval. Thomas McCannett, sharp angle shot, and that is a roar that Bordeval will never, ever forget. 2-0. Canadians. Downstairs now for an update on Max Pacioretty. Here is Jessica. Max Pacioretty has had his fair share of bad luck, particularly in the year 2013. In January, he underwent emergency appendectomy surgery, and he was supposed to be out three to four weeks, but he was able to return only seven and a half days after the operation. In February, he was bit in the game against the Toronto Maple Leafs by Miguel Grabowski. He didn't miss any time, but he did need to get a tetanus shot. Then in May, he missed game two of the playoffs against the Ottawa Senators with a separated shoulder. And fast forward to this year, he missed the last home game against the Philadelphia Flyers with a wrist injury. And of course, his newest injury came this past Tuesday against the Winnipeg Jets. So let's just say I'm sure Max Pacioretty is looking forward for a fresh start in 2014. Thank you, Jessica. How about that? Appendectomy, surgeries, tetanus shots. Alleged biting. Was that alleged or was it? Was it I, did they finally I, admit to it? Uh, it? It certainly looked like it. You know. <laughs> Drifted in towards the net as Montreal goes looking for more. There's a heavy hit as Gallagher is run over by Brandon Dubinsky, and that's going to draw a crowd. Lars Eller comes in. Galchenyuk's in there as well. And, I would suggest both those guys are out of their league with Dubinsky. I'll give Brandon Dubinsky a lot of credit. This is a big hit and a moment where his team needs it, and he knows if he hits Gallagher, he's going to draw a crowd. 
Gallagher's feisty enough. He's going to step right back up. But Dubinsky realizes his team's down by a couple. They're down deep in their own zone. Good clean hit. Just comes in and skates through. Gallagher looked a lot worse because Gallagher was off the boards and got thrown into the boards. But give Gallagher credit. Watch. He just bounces right back up. And he just keeps on going. The play continues as his teammates come in to let Dubinsky know they're not pleased with the way he took Brendan Gallagher into the boards. And the result of this is a roughing penalty against Alex Gilchenyuk. So Columbus will get a chance on the power play. And not been bad. Ninth overall coming into action tonight. They went one for three against the Red Wings. Their lone goal of the game was by Cam Atkinson. Brandon Dubinsky is that type of player. He wears the A. He is a leader on this team. But when you hit a guy like Brendan Gallagher, you're going to have to make sure you pay attention the rest of the game looking over your shoulder because Brendan Gallagher's the type of guy who's going to look for revenge. Better Tootin wides and fires a shot that was deflected right in front of uh, Price. Here's Tootin again. Dishes off and hard shot by Mark Lattes to Price trying to hold his ground. He's down and the referee lost sight of the puck so they get a whistle. And Price under siege there. In the Montreal net. Todd Richards not happy that the whistle was blown, but Carey Price with three fantastic stops, he was able to hold his ground. And that is going to be a goaltender interference call here against Columbus. Wow, that's just a little shot, but Umberg is in a great position. He's right in front of Carey Price doing a great job. That last push as Carey Price goes down is where the penalty was. Georges is coming in, couldn't take Umberger out because of the size difference, and Price had to hold his ground with his right leg. A big break for the Habs. I don't know if I'd want to be, if I'd call that goaltender interference with everybody crashing on Perry Price, but the Montreal Canadiens will definitely take it as they nullify the Columbus Blue Jackets' first penalty in the power play of the game. Last in just about 15 seconds. I thought the whistle was for losing sight of the puck. It didn't seem like much of a shot. You saw no. Price go back, but bottom line is it is four on four here for another minute and a half. In a two nothing game here on goals by Rene Bork and Michael Bornevall. Former captain in Shawinigan, Memorial Cup champion. Here comes Jack Johnson in over the line, a step too early. It is offside. Well, Team Canada takes on the USA and National Women's Team Series Game 2 of 6 on the road to Sochi. Live coverage of that international hockey pre-tournament competition is on right now live on TSN. And a game being played just down the road in Wabran. Quebec. Buck is dumped in, and this is going to be icing against Montreal. So, how do you think Montreal has responded first game back against a difficult opponent after the long road trip? Well, they've done a fantastic job, and Todd Richards does his best to keep his team in the games and play that team system. But the Montreal Canadiens have come out of this game out of the gate with lots of jump, and it was all led by P.K. Subban on the back end. Every shift he's seen on the ice so far is something is happening. And he's out there again. Two more assists already for Subban tonight. Six game point streak. Ten points in those six games. And counting. Good pass up to Markov. Markov trying to make a spin move, lost his footing, and here comes Columbus the other way, led by Zubinski. Zubinski was lined up momentarily there by Subban. He saw that coming in front. Atkinson is hanging away from the puck and lost control, and it comes all the way back down the ice. Okay, Subban, uh, I think, would normally step up and look for a big hit, but you've got to be very careful four on four. You take a hit, those four on three, you grab the penalty on a big hit. It's much easier in a four and three to score in the five on four, so Subban just pulled up a little. Jenner throws it out in front, and that almost connected with Dubinsky. Here comes Thomas Plakanitz. Plakanitz, who is getting very close to 400 career points at the 398, entering action tonight. And Sergei Bobrovsky will cover up on the far post. Thomas Plakanitz is a very quiet leader for the Montreal Canadiens. He does it penalty kill, power play, face-offs. He's had a tremendous season with the Habs. Andre Markov trying to generate more offense, but they've got two on the board here in the Bell Center. Freddie Bork struggling with flu-like symptoms, and that is always a problem in hockey locker rooms. Head coach Michelle Therrien was asked by the media this morning if he 
has some kind of team rule about wearing warmer clothing in cold weather? That's a good question, and I was not ready for that question. I'll take that in consideration. No, it's true. Yeah. Tell you what, he was in a real good mood this morning. That question came from Pat Hickey of the Gazette. It broke everybody up in the room, and he was saying that in Winnipeg the other day, it was two degrees, and guys like potentially Borg weren't wearing any winter coats. And so Pat was just saying, you know, I don't know if you've ever given any consideration to making it a team rule. What do you think of that, Ritter? Well, <laughs> there are lots of rules, but it was a good question by Pat Hickey. This is blue season, and it was chilly in Winnipeg, and uh, but. You know, that, that, that's a difficult one. We want to make that rule that they're going to have to go buy the guys the coats. Which I don't think the Montreal Canadiens want to have uh, team jackets. I think that went on in the 50s though, when they had the team coats. When you've been around as long as Pat Hickey has covering this team, you can ask questions. Anything you want, really. There's a loose puck in front. Price is down. It comes to the line. Not out here. Murray tees it up on the far side for Atkinson, and he whistles one high and out of play. Regardless, Michelle Terrien it is now into his second season of his second stint. He often does think of everything. He has really been able to have a knack of getting this team right back on track after losses. Maybe that's why Paddock asked the question, because Michelle Terrien is so good at taking care of the small details in the game and the travel and everything about the team, that that's one of the small details that uh, Pat picked up and said, hey, this is one thing you missed. And but Michelle Terrence done a fantastic job with this team. In the last year's shortened season, and once again this season, off to a great start. Especially the young players. He does such a good job of bringing young players in slowly and allowing them to mature and insulating them with stronger players and putting them in positions where they're going to succeed. And Eller, Galtenia, Gallagher, now Bourneval. Daniel Maria racing after the loose puck. Bobrovsky came out, trying to bank it off the boards. Instead, he banks it off the referee, and it stays inside the line. Bouncing puck, chopped free by R.J. Umberger. Up there with Johansson. Here's Johansson. I got a piece of the post. Trice got a piece of it, and the rest of it went off the goal post. Here's Briere, drops it off. On the move there for Jared Tenorti, who has stepped up in the plate. He's going to hustle back where he's far more comfortable at the back end. Jared Tenorti still looking for his first NHL goal as well. We've seen one Canadian hit that milestone tonight in Bordeaux. Here comes Collins. Snaps a shot that goes off the leg of Markov in behind the net. Subban's back there, so is Mark Letestu. He wears number 55. He led the Blue Jackets in goals last year with 13. At the line, Savard walks in, cross ice pass. There's a shot there by Nikita, gets his own rebound back, goes back to Savard. Savard across, there's Como with a drive in behind the net. Broken stick for Bordeval. Here's an advantage here for Columbus as they move it around. Savard, Como with a drive. That is blocked right in front by Ryan White, and it is cleared only by Travis Moore. Great job by the Montreal Canadiens fourth line, and they're getting a good round of applause as they exit the ice and make the line change. Good job of blocking shots and keeping the Columbus Blue Jackets to the outside and really not giving up any opportunities. Giotti up to Brandon Cross on his back end, floats it in there, and Bobrovsky sees it, and he will hang on. 25-year-old Sergei Bobrovsky who became the first Russian to win the Vesna last season. We're going to have a look at this last shift that I was just speaking about. Great job of getting in the shooting lanes. Here's the goal score. First pass off the goal. Bourneval dropping down, blocking a shot. Blocks another one, breaks his stick. Almost got caught playing the stick again, but the Habs do a great job of protecting the middle of the ice. You can see White stepping up to block the shot. Moen jumping up as they move up and back. If they go in straight lines. You go up to the shooter, back to the net. Up to the shooter, back to the net. It was like a five-on-five -five penalty kill. Gianta digging for that loose puck off the draw. Nobody could get a shot away, but the captain is right back on it. Gianta, who played his 700th career game against the Winnipeg Jets the other night, and he almost had a rebound right there. 
The odds of both of his points so far coming in one game against the Philadelphia Flyers. Would like to get on track there. And Brian Chianti gets going. He's very streaky. You'll see him score five, six games in a row. He does a lot of little things away from the puck that make him so valuable to this team. And when he's not getting his numbers put on the board, you see those things in other parts of the game. Here's Ryan Johansson, first to the puck, can't get it very far. It's moved back up the boards for Galchenia. Alex Galchenyuk up there again with Lars Eller and Brendan Gallagher. Here's Eller with some room, puts it back to the line for Markov. Almost had it teed up for Subban, but it just came outside the line. And he's having a little discussion there with Boone Jenner. We're less than a minute away from the first intermission. Here's what we have coming up. We'll get the uh, Sports Center update from the TSN newsroom. We've got Have Your Say with Bobby Dulles. And analysis with my partner Dave Reed. All coming up in the first intermission tonight from the Bell Center. Lots to talk about in this first period. A great start by both teams, but the Montreal Canadiens, the only ones who've been able to get on the board with two goals. And this is a great first period by the Habs after their long Western Canada four-game road trip. Shots are 14-11 in favor of the Canadians. Usually these are the toughest games. That first one back, but the Habs have done a great job in the first period to control the game. Subban trying to drift one in front, was looking for Eller, did not reach him. Rolls inside the line for Markov, and a play is whistled down. Smart play by P.K. Subban right there as the puck was shot high and Umberger had taken off. He was actually going to be in behind him. So Subban just took a wild swing at it. I say wild, it looked wild, but he knew what he was doing and he got a piece of it. And he was calling the high stick to faceoff, even though it was touched up with the blue line. The faceoff's going to come all the way back to the faceoff dot to the right of Carey Price. But P.K. Subban, just the little things. Again, that's something that most defensemen would miss that puck. But the elite players get a piece of that puck and are able to get the whistle as Markov touched it after the high stick. And he was having that explained to him on his way to the bench there. Here is Georges. Georges who played in Kelowna for his junior team with Blake Como who's out on the ice tonight for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Went to back-to-back -back Memorial Cups, did Como. Won it in 04 with Georges. Much fun did Josh Georges have scoring in Vancouver with his grandmother and his whole family there. That was pretty exciting. Not just to get the win, but uh, to score a goal. It's always nice to go back to your hometown. The closest place for your family is to score for them. He is from Kelowna, technically, but a BC boy for sure. Grew up watching the Canucks. Here's Cam Atkinson back to the line for Nikitin. Drifts a high shot that's knocked down in front. Final couple of seconds. Darren A skates it away, and this will do it. Pretty entertaining opening 20 minutes here in Montreal tonight. Goals by Rennie Bork and the first career goal by Michael Bornival that got the crowd up and on its feet. A very good performance by the Shelterians team indeed against a pesky Columbus Blue Jackets team. P.K. Subban remains hot. We got Have Your Say with Bobby Dallas coming up, but first a Sports Center update. You're watching the Canadians on TSN. Getting set to go here for the second period of the Bell Center. 2-0 Montreal as we take a quick look at the first period scoring summary. It was Rennie Bork who scored a power play goal 17 seconds into Montreal's power play. His second of the season. And Michael Bornevall gets the first of his career to make it 2-0. The shot's there 14-11. And Carey Price has now stopped 86 of the last 87 shots that he has faced as you look at... 21-year-old from Shawinigan who's probably still got chills. Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic to do it at home. You know, growing up in the uh, Montreal area, being a half stand and then coming out here and scoring a goal. Not only was it a, a nice goal, but it was against the Vezina Trophy winner. And the two guys who get in on the assists are Markov and P.K. Subban. Against last year's Vezina Trophy winner. You can, yeah, that, you can tell that story. Yeah, That's bad. a pretty good story yeah. to tell 20 yeah. years from now. And a great one-timer. You know, there was there was no, I shot it off the end glass and he kicked it in his own net. No, no. That was a great one-timer on a beautiful setup. Interesting thing about Sergei Bobrovsky, they've scored two on him tonight with 40 minutes to play here. Two has been his magic number for a long time now. He's allowed two goals or less and 24 of his last 31 starts. 
He has been very stingy. By Johansson, bumps off the puck, keeps it deep, pushes it into the corner. There's Markov. Up the boards and out, and back to get it is Jack Johnson, who was acquired in February 2012 for Jeff Carter in a first-round pick. Columbus took Marco Dano, 27th overall in the 2013 draft with that pick. Right now he's currently in Slovakia playing the KHL for Bratislava. Remember that name, Dave. That is going to be a key part of that trade because Marco Dano is a heck of a young player. And I think he's going to have a very bright future in Columbus. He plays the Columbus style. He's the same size as 6'2", 200-pound player with skill. That would be a bad trade then if you get both Johnson and Dano if he turns out the way you say for, you know, you paid a big price for a Jeff Carter, but that could work out well for Columbus. And, of course, they're still waiting for Nathan Horton to play his first game. Here's Ryan White, loose puck, shot right on, and the rebound bounced to Eller, and just out of his reach. Here comes Dubinsky. Dubinsky, the former New York Ranger, who's really up the work ethic of this team, talking to Todd Richards and people around the club. Here's Wisniewski right in front. Atkinson is there, and he looks skyward as Price stood his ground. There's that offense from Wisniewski. Beautiful little pass into Atkinson. Eller with a draw pass to nobody, but the... Man back is Subban. Quick pass into the middle for Eller again, who carries it over the line. Gallagher tried to get it deep, could not, and then he gets it back into the slot on his back end. Here's Gallagher. Weak back end goes in behind the net. Eller and Gallagher both fighting for it, and they come away with it. Here's Eller circling around against Wisniewski. Right out and got a quick shot, but Bobrovsky was there to cut off the angle. There's Gallagher, very strong on his skates, gets away from a couple of shoves by Wisniewski. Back to the line, Markov, Subban, off of the end boards where Como is on it, he puts it up the boards. Excellent shift by Eller, Gallagher, Galchenyuk, once again down low. Brendan Gallagher is so good, Dave, at protecting the puck, using his feet to keep the play alive and keep that puck tight into his body. Very difficult to check. Daniel Briere now on the puck in behind the net. He feeds it back to the line for Tenorti. His wrist shot bounces to Darnay, and he couldn't find it in time to get it onto his forehand. With a little room to shoot at behind Bobrovsky. Once again, the Montreal Canadiens, great job in the first couple of minutes getting three good point shots and creating the space by bringing that puck down low and the Montreal Canadiens being wide open again for some great scoring chances. Eric McKenzie comes crashing in, in his own zone, jars the puck loose and skates away. Off the center where it's immediately turned back, McKenzie chops at it again. And right now it is Montreal's puck here in this second period. Close to four minutes into it. Very strong at controlling the puck in all zones, and that's what today's game is. You have to control the puck, you have to support the puck, and the Canadians are doing a very good job of it. You really saw it develop through the road trip. That's something Michel Therrien has really worked on, is controlling the play, handing, up, handing that puck off in the short pass, he's protecting the puck, and developing opportunities, and the, the Habs have played the system to a tee. And they're still doing it. Here's Rafael Diaz, he goes across to his partner, Georges, drifts a long shot in on Bobrovsky, and he'll snare it with a glove and hang on. Well, Cam Atkinson had one opportunity in this period, and the only opportunity that was a glorious one, but it was a great play by Wisniewski gets the puck, and he just a little wrister into Atkinson. Atkinson went right to that looking for a rebound. It was Wisniewski credit. That was a very heads-up play to realize Atkinson was wide open, and Cam Atkinson had a beautiful goal, the only goal against the Red Wings in their last game, the 2-1 loss. And on that situation, he got in so tight that he had to do a quick shot to carry first off. Atkinson is not a big guy, but he's effective and he's very skilled offensively. Former NCAA champion at Boston College, was a Hobie Baker finalist in 2010 when he led the NCAA with 30 goals that season. With 31, I should say, in 2011. There's a quick shot and a save by Price off his glove and over the net. Better Tootin with a quick one-timer and Price gets a round of applause from the faithful here. 
two excellent opportunities by Columbus have got in this period have both been stopped by Carey Price and when we talked the Habs have controlled the play but the opportunities they've given up have been beauties and Price is there once again. This is Ryan Johansson fourth overall pick in 2010. And over the line, but not very far before Ryan White comes back the other way for Montreal. In the Columbus zone, he goes up to border ball. Is ridden out there by Fenner Tootin. Tootin, a longtime member of this defensive core for the Blue Jackets after being acquired from the New York Rangers. He missed the start of the season. The lower body, or rather an upper body injury. Happy to have him back out there alongside Jack Johnson. Ryan White back to the line. Markov gives it back to White. White shot right on. Loose puck. And then rebound by Bornaval. Just goes wide. Smart play by Bornaval. Great balance. Oh. Subban had Atkinson lined up, and he saw with the last second. And PK is going to take an elbowing penalty. As he took a run at Atkinson, and they feel as though he got his elbow up too high. Yeah, I remember I talked about earlier in the game when PK Subban did not step up for the check in the neutral zone. He does on this one. Atkinson's a little guy. Sees him the last second. And, whoa. On the live look, I thought he did get the elbow up. That's what the referee saw. But clearly on that replay, you can see that there was no elbow. But that's the problem of making the big hit in today's game. And it was a good, clean check. But the problem is it happens so fast, and these players are so big. Superman is so good at that hit. That is 50 percent of the time, probably more, you're going to get a call because the referee just saw the this call there for sure. Columbus is 0 for 1 tonight to the power play. Montreal's penalty killing 3 for 3 against the Jets on Tuesday. They allow just two power play goals against on the entire four-game road trip. play goals against they came in the first two games one in Calgary one in Edmonton and they have been perfect for their last two games on the PK six for six now one for one tonight second power play opportunity for Columbus and they are having trouble just gaining the zone best way to kill penalties is not take them it has been very disciplined three minor penalties per game in the last two games it's uh that's the way you want to play. If you can get if you can under three, you usually kill those. You get the four or five, those are the penalties that seem to cost you. Good work down low by Press. Scores! Andre Markov with a shot from the point. May have been tipped in front, but it's Montreal's second short-handed goal of the season. They just definitely hit something. I'm not sure if it was Ryan White, but great shot, great job of Crust down low. And you can see White coming in, just Crust holding the puck, protecting the puck. We talked about how the Habs do that. Great job of White right on the puck, and the shot comes in. Not sure if it went off, and maybe it was Jack Johnson, but it definitely hits a stick and rises. And you can see Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky goes low, and that puck hits a stick and comes up over the pad and in the back of the net for a huge short-handed goal. They are giving it to Andre Markov. And for Markov, it will be his first goal of the season. Give a big assist to Brandon Crust, who did great work down low. Here's Johansson with a drive, and that just sticks side high. Still 36 seconds to go on the elbowing call against P.K. Subban. Columbus now down by three. Here's Tootin now. Tootin pressure gives it up to Umberger. Umberger peels away. Trying to cross ice pass. Off a stick and out of play. Right now they're saying Markov unassisted, but I tell you what, all that work down low by Pruss created the goal. Yeah, you won't see it on the stat sheet, the assist, but it was all done down low by Pruss. Here's the shot, it comes in, and it definitely hits something, and it comes straight up. Not sure if that was White stick or if it was Johnson's stick, but you can see on the replay there was a deflection, and I'm sure the National Hockey League and the scorekeepers will get it right, and we'll know by the end of the period if they're going to change that. Shot in the traffic, loose puck scores! Boone Jenner with his first NHL goal. And Columbus is on the board, and what a thrill for Jenner. 
power play goal for Boone Jenner, and he's right in front of the net on the rebound. They have good puck control, get puck to the net, and there's Jenner. Nice play by Jenner to take it from the backhand to his forehand, and he just out muscles Giante. Giante can't get in quick enough to grab the stick. Boone Jenner is a big kid at 20 years old, and that is the first of many for the young Columbus Blue Jacket. His first National Hockey League goal was a tremendous player for the Ottawa Generals in the Ontario Hockey League, the Dorchester, Ontario native. Gets his team back in the game and quickly quiets the crowd after the excitement of Markov's shorthanded goal was still in the building, but Boone Jenner silenced that with his first National Hockey League goal and a power play goal against the Montreal Canadiens. That is just 49 seconds after Markov had scored shorthanded. Jenner, who scored 45 of them last year in the OHL for Oshawa, then finished the season in the American Hockey League with Springfield. Big thrill for him. So two guys with their first NHL goals tonight. Michael Bourneval for Montreal and Jenner for the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Oshawa Generals, uh, he wasn't expected to make this team. They really expected him to come in and play a year in the American Hockey League, get seasoned, and then come back. But he just forced his way onto the team. Todd Richards was telling us before the game how he spent, Jenner spent the summer in Columbus training and working out, and it's paid off. Love playing in the Columbus area. It's such a player-friendly area. It's a good sports town, big college sports town. Ohio State is there. And here comes Columbus in a lot again. Atkinson trying to dish it off. Jenner's there. There's Dubinsky. Quick shot and a save by Price. Good reaction save by Price in traffic on the fast release. There's Markov slowing things down to his partner, PK. Here comes Gallagher with a head of steam down the right side. Could get a shot away, and he's written out there by Ryan Murray. Back to the line for Diaz. His shot is off a stick. Far post, a far point for Josh Georges. Out of the corner now is Gallagher. Tripped up, and Columbus is going to skate it out, led by James Wisniewski. by Ryan Murray working on Gallagher down low a couple of Western Hockey League foes in the past few years but Ryan Murray is a tremendous young defenseman played in Everett and Gallagher obviously in Vancouver but give Murray credit really Gallagher's tough to handle down low and Ryan Murray held him to the outside very well this is Anisimov he stopped up put a shot towards the net and it bounces to Fitter Tootin and behind the goal is Umberger on his backhand paddle down his price and this is cleared down the ice and waves off for Brodsky out of his net to handle it. Will Columbus gain some momentum? Here comes Jared Bowl trying to bust his way in. Got a shot away. Rebound was quickly scooped up and turned back by Placanitz. In over the line, he goes. Chips it around to Keaton. Savard is first to the box. Subban following up to the net and a big rebound bounces right to Ryan Craig. Great shot by P.K. Subban, smartly. Not a hard shot, just a smart shot. Foot off the ice, looking for the rebound. Here comes Bonneval. Good final lane to shoot, goes back to the line. They move it over to Subban, snaps it into traffic. Hit Moen. Or to Keaton in front, one of the two. And Craig sidesteps Subban again, who again had that hip out. Markov goes crashing in against Derek McKenzie, and McKenzie is not shy. Will get up and have his save on that, and Subban's in there. He's got a hold of Craig. This all started. McKenzie went awkwardly into the boards. Markov was coming in behind, chasing for the loose puck, and I think McKenzie felt that he got kind of tripped or stepped on the stick of Markov, and a scrum ensued, but cooler heads will prevail. Markov with a shorthander. Boone generates for Columbus. It is 3-1. Well, having a look at the... Columbus Blue Jackets bench and this team does a lot of work with the Blue Jackets Foundation and they do a lot of work with charities and hospitals in the Columbus area and this young gentleman here is Nicholas Gagne. Nicholas is 10 years old. He suffers from a degenerative muscle disorder called Duchenne muscular dystrophy and he makes a trip down to Columbus once a year with his family in the summer and while he was at the hospital one of the nurses quickly called over to the Columbus Blue Jackets and said hey I've got this young guy who wants to come over to the rink Nicholas and his family went over to the rink Todd Richards 
got him there. He's in the stands today with his father, David, and his mother, Stephanie. So Todd Richards in the summer had got about 10 guys who were staying down in Columbus locally. They all came down to the rink. They signed a bunch of stuff for him. They sent him home with some Columbus garb. And then when they got into Montreal, they had set it up. They were going to get you to the game. They brought him to practice yesterday, and he got a tour of the locker room, the Columbus Blue Jackets visiting team locker room, and now he's their guest at the game tonight. Great story. Uh, just some off-ice work by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Montreal kid who is a lifelong Blue Jackets fan, and for very good reason. It is a medical center for the Columbus area. Columbus with another face-off win. They do not get control of the puck off the draw. This is going to be a penalty again to Montreal. As Como was searching for that loose puck, and that's why they didn't get control of it. It's a hook against Ryan White. Second fraction that will always get under the skin of the head coach. Yes, it's difficult. Ryan White comes up with Como, and he's really trying to lift the stick up a little bit. Gets a little too high. And Como goes down on his back, so right off the faceoff, it's kind of tough not to call those when you're standing over top of him. Your stick's being held up under his arm and high, and Como lying on the ice. But uh, those are puck battles. Como holds his balance and doesn't go down. There's no penalty, but when you go down, the hook is going to be called. It's a big penalty kill by the Montreal Canadiens. Columbus's last power play, a bit of an adventure. They did score a power play goal. They also allowed the shorthander to mark off the third of his career, by the way. Here's Johansson, quick release, handled by Price, goes into the corner, now Dubinsky, keeps it moving to the point for a test two, Price doesn't see it, and racing it to get after it was Dubinsky, chops it into the corner, and there is Crust who's able to send it down the ice. Brandon Dubinsky almost had that one bang in off his body as Diaz and George is in front when the clear was made, it hit Dubinsky and almost bounced in the open side. Four shots for Columbus on its last power play attempt. Johansson trying to barge his way in there. Two keeps that puck into the line and trips a weak slap shot wide of the mark off of the end boards and bounces free. And quickly back inside the line where Eller has it. Lars Eller has Montreal's other shorthanded goal this season, but it was a weird one in Vancouver where he was really just the last guy to, to touch the puck. It was that bank shot that went off of Hanus and Luongo and in. That was the weirdest goal I've ever seen. I don't think we're going to see another one like that. The way it rattled around. I had to rewind the tape to see who touched the puck last to figure out who they're going to give the goal to. But Eller will be uh, quite happy to take that one. Well, they will because Montreal was one of two teams, Dave, that did not score a shorthanded goal all of last season. And they got two already here. That's surprising because they've got excellent puck pressure on the penalty kill, and it's surprising with the talent of the players killing the penalties that they didn't have any last year, but they really like the way they pressure and they're not afraid to take that chance when they get the loose puck, especially in the neutral zone, such as this with Buchanan's, and he'll take it and try to make something of it. Thomas Buchanan's has drawn a penalty here, so his power play is over. It's a tripping call against Boone Jennings. Well, this is twice the Columbus Blue Jackets have nullified their own power plays. Boone Jenner gets caught at the blue line. This is a difficult play. You're stepping forward into a player coming at you. Placanitz has the puck, and you can see Jenner reaches out with the right leg and, and kicks Placanitz's feet out from under him. It's very difficult to go straight at players in straight lines because that's what happens. A little shake one way or the other by the offensive player, and you have no choice but to stick a foot out or drag the player down, and that's what happened to Boone Jenner. Four on four. Michelle Therrien has thrown Daniel Breer and David Deardey up front. Daniel Breer taking that face off there. They're starting to use him a little bit more in the middle tonight. And Deardey along the wing. Notice that hit McKenzie did on Markov there on the boards. Remember, it was McKenzie went in heavily from Markov earlier, and I think McKenzie just got his payback. The crowd wanted a penalty, a hit from behind. Not Markov in towards the net. Canadians keep the puck moving. Five on four, now in effect for a minute and a half. In behind the net is Breer, centers it. It comes to McKenzie, and he sends it down the length of the ice. Rene Bork in front, Markov coming in the back door, but it was Daniel Breer just forcing the play a little bit. He should have waited. He tried to saucer, but just couldn't quite work. Here comes Breer. Stops up inside the line, drifts it to open ice for Subban. Keeps it moving in behind the net. Jack Johnson intercepts it, and... Flips it right back down. Smart play by Jack Johnson. Daniel, David Dayarnay De behind the offensive net, 
let the puck go and Johnson came in and pulled back and got the puck the other way. Galchenyuk shot off a stick and out of play with 52 seconds to go on the Canadiens power play. <laughs> We, uh, we talked about an odd shorthanded goal the Habs got, and uh, we may have spoken too soon as Terry Price just went to move that puck up to Subban. He does it nicely on that one, but he just missed after that, and it almost ended up right in between two. You know, oh, he, he's, good. he's good for one of those oh. once in a while. You know, you just where you end up scratching your head and thinking, what is he, what is he doing there? Well, that was a good break, though, but... Uh, he can grab with a bad breakout as he's sticking on the bottom of his own net once again. Well, this is a very effective penalty kill for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And one they desperately need. Down by two, late stages of the second period. On the road. First of five straight at home for the Canadians. Here's Gallagher. He can't center it. Eller puts it back to the line. Diaz moves it across. Here's Bouillon. His shot. Looking for the tip in front from Gallagher. And it's Dan Bobrovsky's got it. And he will hang on. So give Bobrovsky a nice play there to reach out and take that uh, shot pass away. And you said it, Dave. Bouillon was looking for the tip with Gallagher in front of the net. And Bobrovsky just reached up and grabbed it. Very heads up play by the crafty veteran of 38 years old. And boy, oh boy, he just seems to get better and better. And uh, he defeated all the odds. Not the biggest of defensemen, but he's got tremendous skill, tremendous skating stride. One of these players who's not drafted, but is an integral part of the Montreal Canadiens. Never drafted in the NHL, never drafted in junior. Went on to win a Memorial Cup playing for Michelle Therrien in Granby. He's got a long history with Therrien who knew exactly what he was getting. Julian was brought in. Brandon Cross does a feather one in for Subban. That does it for the Canadiens power play. Back to five on five with five minutes to go. Here comes Jenner just fresh out of the box. Snaps his shot up high on Price and he'll hang on for the whistle. And with that, we will take a break. 3-1 Canadiens on CSN. Coaches on respective benches. With that story, here is Jessica. Todd Richards was originally drafted by the Montreal Canadiens in the 1985 draft. He was selected 33rd overall. He made his pro debut with the Sherbrooke Canadiens, which was the Habs AHL affiliate team at the time. And one of his teammates was J.J. Daniel, who is now one of the assistant coaches, coaches with the Montreal Canadiens. I had a chance to talk to J.J. earlier today. He said Richards is a guy who understood the game of hockey very well and isn't surprised he got into coaching. But for Richards, his time with the Canadians was cut short as he was traded the following season to the Hartford Whalers. Well, he only played eight games, Jessica, in the National Hockey League, but he's coached extensively around the National Hockey League. Head coach of Minnesota for two seasons. Was a longtime assistant in San Jose. Was a big reason they were able to really elevate their power play. Here's Dubinsky in over the line. Held on to by Price. And he had to jump over. Will Jenner was going hard to the net. One other little interesting note about Todd Richards, he also coached in the American League in Wilkes-Barre Scranton. He took over behind that bench reader when Michelle Terrian was promoted to Pittsburgh. And he eventually took them to a Calder Cup final there. Todd Richards has great respect by all his players, and he's the type of coach you want to play for. He gives respect and he uh, he earns the respect of the players. Not a bad word said about Todd Richards by any of his players or anybody who's played for him. He is what you call a real players coach. He's done a super job with this Columbus team. Almost got them in the playoffs last season, but just the way he's handled this team from last season into this season, uh, well deserving of all the accolades he's been getting. He'll be on the bench at the Olympics for Team USA as one of the assistants to Dan Bilesman. Jenner again has one tonight. The only goal Columbus has. Ryan Murray cross ice pass to McKeaton on his backhand. Tips it into the corner and waiting for it on the side boys is Travis Mullen. Travis Mullen lost his stick there. Atkinson's giving him a, a little bit of trouble. Josh George is up the boards and now Columbus has Montreal hemmed in its own zone. They get up the boards for White. Dubinsky. 
immediately there. Now waiting for the puck and coming away is Bordeval. Bordeval takes a hard hit there from Umberger. Not until he got it deep. And that line hits for a change. Played by Bordeval and good work down low on the board with Ryan White. Knowing they couldn't ice the puck, they waited, waited until the right opportunity. And Bordeval did his job. Got the puck to center, got it in and took the hit. They made the play and they were getting they were able to get the change. Here comes Gallagher with a hit of steam, trying to feed it out in front. He is wiped out along the end boards by Savard and Bobrovsky covers up and hangs on. It is still 3-1, second period, late stages in Montreal. Third overall pick in the 2012 NHL entry draft, Alex Gelchenyuk, the guy who was taken right before him, is also in the game tonight. Ryan Murray, an interesting little note here, Dave. These two young players have both had terrible injuries to start their careers. Alex Galchenyuk was drafted, had the injury of his ACL, was drafted afterwards. Ryan Murray was drafted and had shoulder surgery, missed most of last season, and has stepped in right now for the Columbus Blue Jackets and just continues to excel. Both of these young players, well-deserving of the second and third picks in 2012. They're gonna have long, bright futures in the National Hockey League. There were a lot of teams that wanted to trade up and get a hold of Ryan Murray, and. Columbus yeah. knew exactly what they were drafting. He's not a flashy guy. He will not wow you with offense, but what he will do is play rock solid D at the back end. Here's just over three minutes to go here. Want to let you know that in the second intermission, here's what we have on deck for you. We'll take you back to the TSN newsroom for a Sports Center update. We've got In the Box with Francois Gagnon from La Presse. He'll join me here upstairs. This United the NHL tonight to talk about different subjects. And of course, Dave will have his highlights and analysis after 40 minutes of play. Here's Gallagher on the loose. Puck snaps a shot that goes wide. Eller puts it out in front, looking for Galchenyuk. Alex Galchenyuk keeps the puck alive to Eller. Eller spins it right back down low, just out of the reach there of Gallagher. Poked around, Eller, and here's a two-on-one for Columbus. Johansson in, shoots, scores! Wow, did he pick the top corner there. Ryan Johansson, bar down. 3-2, and it's a one-goal game. Uh, all the credit to this shot, Ryan Johansson. Lars Eller does a great job covering up for his defenseman. You can just see he hesitates, gets caught. Flat-footed, Johansson just outreaches him, pokes the puck forward, and then on the two-on-one, comes in the pass. He's taken away. Johansson with the right shot coming down the left side. Markov in the middle to take the pass away, but look at Johansson. He was looking to pass. When he realized he couldn't, he made no mistake on an absolutely perfect shot. Another high draft pick, the fourth overall pick by Columbus in 2010, was Ryan Johansson, and that right there was a National Hockey League goal. Bar down, wow. As Columbus is right back in the game late in the second period. 21-year-old Ryan Johansson from Port Moody, BC. That is his first goal of the season. As Lars Eller got loose, caught flat-footed. Manning the near point. Johansson chipped it past him and buried it. And it is game on here in the Bell Center. And Lars Eller was in perfect position on the play, but he just hesitated. Should I go? Should I back up? And that's what this game's about. The slightest little hesitation, slightest mistake, and you get burned, as they say. Here's Jared Bowl as Todd Richards throws his fourth line right back out there after the goal. Which shows you what he thinks of this Oh, career. he loves this line. He absolutely loves this line. A lot of people within the Columbus organization think the way the team goes is the way that their fourth line goes. Jared, Jared Bull, a big body, loves to crash and bang. Derek McKenzie, they keep it simple, take pucks to the net, and a great shift. They score a goal, they get the momentum, and then you put your crashers and bangers out to set up the tempo. And they now have generated an offensive faceoff. And this building is quieting. Columbus won 70% of the draws in the first period. They've been a good face-off team in the early stages of this season. They're coming up two tight games against two contenders in Boston and Detroit. Essentially two one-goal games. In the Boston game, they lost 3-1. One of them was an empty netter. Todd Richards, we spoke to him before the game. He, he was fine. They came in on a two-game losing streak, but he said, you know what? Our last six periods have been our best. 
And from John Davidson to Yarmo Pinkleinen, the general manager, this organization has a winning mentality. They're not happy with losing games. They're not happy with being close where they used to be. And they showed again in this game against the Habs. They battled back. They are not going to go away. And that's why a lot of people really feel that they are a playoff bound team because they've got that win mentality. And they're doing a fantastic job with the Columbus organization and Todd Richards with this team to get the most out of his players and have them believe in themselves. Another thing Columbus is quite happy about is their travel schedule just got a whole lot easier this season. No more long trips out to the West Coast. Here's Jenner at center ice, flips it ahead, trying to get around Georges. He's got a snap and Georges angles him off and into the end boards. But Columbus still on the puck. There is Atkinson back into the corner for Dubinsky. Dubinsky. Works down low against Bourneval. Slap shot right in for Jenner off of the end board. And here's the veteran Georges settling things down and flipping it into the zone. Now John. Former first round pick of the Carolina Hurricane. Look at the strength of Jack Johnson. Moon's a big guy. And Johnson just leaned one way and just threw him down. Atkinson, long wrist shot, gobbled up by Price. 24.3 seconds left here in this second period. Well, on Tuesday, we continue to bring you Habs Regional Hockey as the Oilers are in Montreal next week to take on the Canadians. Live coverage begins here on your regional TSN Canadians channel, 7.30 Eastern, 8.30 Atlantic. The Oilers trying to snap a losing streak. They're at a shootout right now on the island. They're down a goal for the Islanders. Tanner Hall scored two goals in eight seconds tonight. Jack Johnson on the third overall pick by Carolina in 05. He's 6'1", 238 pounds, and you can see it as he battled Moen down deep. He's just a horse for this Columbus Blue Jackets team. Here's Subban now. Takes that pass. Dances in. Subban cuts into the middle and had it taken away by an Isimov. Ten seconds to go. Here comes Humberger back in the way. Humberger with a shot, and Price juggled it for a moment. Saad and covered it. Five for one more face-off for Columbus in the Montreal zone. Great stop by Perry Price, but P.K. Subban was looking for a penalty. He was stripped from the referee the whole way back as he tried to dangle his way in. And it was pretty good clock management by P.K. Subban in the last 10 seconds of a period. He tried to take the puck to the net, but one extra play and give Columbus and Archie Emberg credit. They were able to take it right back down and get a pretty good scoring chance. But uh, that Subban was doing a pretty good job late in the period of trying to get it to the net, but just one move too many. That is a good face-off win there by Daniel Breer against Anisimov, who is Columbus's top face-off man, negating any last-second chance there against Carey Price. So Price and company will head to the locker room with a one-goal lead after 40 minutes of play. Couple of goals there in that second period, including a short hander by Andre Markov and a first goal of Boone Jenner's career. 3-2. After two, you're watching the Canadians on TSN. Big summer in the Bell Center. Markov with his third career short-handed goal, followed closely by the first goal of Boone Jenner's National Hockey League career on the power play. And then Ryan Johansson with his first of the season. And that's where we sit. 3-2 after 40 minutes of play as both goaltenders settle in for what will be a challenging third period. Montreal so far so good when leading after two this season. 4-0. and oh. The Columbus Blue Jackets have actually rallied once already this season. Trailing 2 nothing after two on Long Island and came back to win 3-2 in a shootout. Interesting start again to the, to the third period and it looked a lot exactly or a lot like it was exactly the same play as the Habs did to start the game. Push the puck forward. Bruss throws, Bruss throws it to Gionta. Here's the start of the game. It's up. Bruss gets it over to Gionta and a shot. Exact same thing just happened at the start of the third period. Good set play by the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, do guys talk about that? Will he say, let's do that exact same yes, thing? You do, and, and it's great that coaches have these set plays off of faceoffs. It's so important to get the puck and make something happen when you get the puck. It's not just about having the puck. It's actually doing something after you retrieve it. Usually you see the face-off plays in the offensive zone, but that's a great neutral zone face-off. Here's Johansson now, goal and an assist for that young forward for Columbus. Try to center it out in front, and he's still causing trouble here. Violet's put up the boards for Gianta beyond his reach, and back to get it is Artem Anisimov. Anisimov, the 25-year-old from Yaroslavl, Russia. Here's Boone Jenner. 
Jenner, the rookie, in snapshot, a heavy release that got up high on Price, and Jenner's on that loose puck again. Here's Murray, at the point, into a crowd, Jenner with a rebound, saved by Price. Jenner went after the rebound again, broke his stick, and throws it in frustration, but I'll tell you what, since he scored his first goal tonight, who Jenner has really upped his game. Oh, I, I agree, and Terry Price has to be very sharp on Jenner's last shot, as he wasn't, Price wasn't able to handle it, but give Terry Price for credit early in this period. He did a fantastic job on some traffic down low in front, but you're absolutely right, Dave. Boone Jenner, he got that goal, and his game has just ramped it up. He's had some big hits. He's been crashing the net. He's had some great scoring opportunities after his first National Hockey goal, and it's a little bit of confidence. Good for Todd Richards to keep putting him back out there at the top line in the, in the offensive position. I second round pick, 37th overall in 2011 is Jenner. Here's Daniel Briere. Spinning around, puts it down low for David Dearnay, who gives it up to Bork. Bork, who got the party started for the game's opening goal. It was a game time decision. There's a quick shot from a sharp angle along the boards from Briere, handled by Bobrovsky. This is Atkinson. Atkinson, who can dangle if you give him some room. Montreal seems to be sitting back on their heels a little bit in this period, not pushing, not really skating. Give Columbus the credit. They're, they're down by a goal, and they they are working hard to get the tie-in goal here. But the Montreal Canadiens need to find that extra jump in their game, the extra step that they had at the start of the game when they were controlling the play. Montreal, at times, on home ice last season, would be lulled to sleep by what you would often consider a lesser opponent. I don't know if you call this a lesser opponent, the way they work on a nightly basis. They don't have the star power. Absolutely. There's no Rick Nash here anymore. Nathan Horton is still a few months away. After his shoulder surgery, Bornevall goes quickly across to Bouillon, and they're away. At center, Gianta hammers it in there. Steered aside by Bobrovsky. Now loose puck for Gianta. He is sandwiched between two Blue Jackets, and here is Derek McKenzie. Garrett Tenori, first to the puck, moves it around the boards, waiting for it along the side there is Brandon Frost, and instead it ends up back the other way. Good pressure here by Columbus, keeping Montreal ahead. The opening three minutes, loose puck in front for Craig, great stop by Price, and Bowl can't find it. Here's Johnson with a drive that hits a body in front and goes wide. Price had lost his stick. And Tenori steers the paddle towards his net minor, but he made a good save. And a penalty call coming up here. It's going to be a high stick. And it's going against Montreal. Here's Johnson. Off the leg into the corner, back to the line. It comes all the way back up to center ice. Delayed penalty call in effect. Columbus is going to get a power play to try to tie this game up. Johnson's going off the ice, but he's going to be coming back into the penalty box because it was his high stick under Jared Bull's chin. And the referee saw it, and then we get the whistle. Montreal is going to have to kill a big penalty at the start of the third period. An accidental high stick, but nonetheless, it was a high stick at the blue line. Montreal 21, minor penalty, high sticking. See, Bull comes in and takes the body on Gianta. Gianta just pushes back with the stick, and it rides up. The jersey and right up underneath the chin the referee standing directly behind him inside the zone saw it happen and put his arm up and give Jared Roll full credit he is a big guy he finishes checks and he just finished the check on the captain Gianta and Brian Gianta didn't like it came back and got the stick up and now his teammates have to bail him out to keep this one goal lead Columbus is one for three with a man advantage tonight the lone power play goal coming from Boone Jenner Johnson steers it over to Wisniewski. Wisniewski can hammer that puck. Montreal fans know all about his prowess with the man advantage. James Wisniewski, 17 of his 38 career goals that come with the man advantage, and 50 of his last 95 points are in this situation right here. Here's Umberger. Gets away from one man into the corner for Johnson, who has stepped up, and he's down low using that big frame against Josh Georges. Umberger, who's not small either, gets it back to Wisniewski. Takes it on his back, and in front, Price comes across and makes the stop on the redirect, and there is no rebound. 
Jack Johnson down low, a defenseman, but he was down low, and it was a great play. It was Zuski with that shot pass. He's through the traffic. Raphael Diaz just gets his stick up as Johnson sliding through the scene redirects, but Carey Price was there to once again keep that one goal lead. Carey Price has been excellent at seeing those pucks through traffic and picking up the deflections. Another face off win off the draw, hard shot blocker save, loose puck scores! Power play goal! And Columbus has tied the game. Face-off win once again, Dave. And guess who goes to the front of the net? Boone Jenner. He got his first National Hockey League goal on the, play, on the power play. A similar situation. The face-off is one directly back. A high shot that Price had to get up high and take in the shoulder. And there's Boone Jenner picking up the rebound, popping out of the pile as he pulls it this time forehand to backhand. His first goal was backhand to forehand, but how important are those face-offs in the defensive zone? You lose them that clean, you're putting yourself in trouble, and Columbus has worked their way to tie this game on the second goal of the game and second National Hockey League goal by Boone Jenner. Montreal was far better on the face-off in the second period, but Columbus is still winning on the night, and that was a clean face-off win. And how about Boone Jenner? Outdoing Michael Bornevall right now by one. Both guys scoring their first NHL goals tonight, and Jenner's got two of them this evening. Both of them with the man advantage. There's a loose pocket. Ronnie Bork fans on that one-time attempt. Gets it back from Bouillon on his backhand. Chips it off the boards. Pulling it off of there is Dardenne towards the net. And Bobrovsky will scoop that up. New game here, the Bell Center. Boone Jenner checking his tape, and he goes to these areas. He goes to the ugly areas. It was a great face-off win. Artem Anisimov just pulls it back from Ryan White. And there's Jenner. He's got excellent hands, and he is in this office, so to speak. He did it in junior hockey. He's done it his whole career in minor hockey. He's a big, bruising forward who would rather go through you than around you. And you add the skill that he's shown tonight with a couple of goals, and uh, Columbus got a heck of a player. Johansson takes that shot. Blocker stopped by Price. There's Anisimov, who drew an assist on the goal with a face-off win. Letestu gets the other assist. And Columbus has scored three unanswered goals to tie this thing up. Five and a half minutes into the third period. Montreal had the last two games with perfect. They've come in and allowed two power play goals to Columbus, and that's why we're tied at three right now. Eller dumps it in. Ryan Murray. Simple play off the boards, but not out. Galchenia keeps it right back in there. Columbus gets a fortuitous bounce, but quick stick by Galchenia trying to keep it in. And he can against Johansson. Backing up is P.K. Subban. Two more points for Subban tonight to extend his point streak. To six games. Here's Gallagher working hard down low, and Jenner has it now. Jenner goes across. That pass is intercepted by Markov. Markov with help. One timer by Blakanis. Rebound to Markov. Sharp angle hit the side of the net or Bobrovsky's stick in a traffic, but it harmlessly goes all the way back down the ice. Well, we speak of Boone Jenner, and uh, we give him such great accolades, but you still see he's a young player. A risky move, cross ice pass. Coming out of your zone, and Markov picks it off and creates a great scoring chance. Look at it. He'll leave it for Gianta. Centering attempt for Cross. His backhander almost trickled into the glove side, but Bobrovsky got just enough of that. Cross couldn't get back to the net. Jack Johnson did a nice job of boxing out Cross as that puck just sat there, and Bobrovsky was kind of flailing as it popped out to the open, but Jack Johnson would not allow Cross to tap it in. Better Tootin in between a couple of Montreal Canadiens. Puts the puck up the boards. Jared Bull tries to head man and does to Derek McKenzie. He's just going to go crashing in there against a the much larger Jared Tenorti. Bull chops at it. Ryan Craig does as well. And this goes up and out of play. Faceoff is going to stay inside the Montreal blue line. Boone Jenner with two tonight, and we're all tied up. 
Bruce Jenner's first national hockey league goal on the power play off a clean face-off win by Ryan Johansson. And Ryan Johansson comes down as the puck bobbled at the blue line on Lars Eller. And then another big face-off win by Artem Anisimov and Boone Jenner with his second national hockey league goal again on the power play. And that's how Columbus has worked their way back to score three straight goals and give this young man, number 38 in white, lots of credit. Boom Jenner with his first two National Hockey League goals, both on the power play, both by crashing that and bouncing or pouncing on rebounds and putting them upstairs. There's a shot into traffic. Everybody looking for that puck, and Price finally covers up and hangs on with a big crowd right in front of him. You know, last season, the Columbus Blue Jackets under Todd Richards started with five wins in its first 17 games, a terrible start, but then they went 19-5 and five and just missed the playoffs. They finished tied in points with Minnesota, but two fewer wins in regulation. They had a franchise record streak of 12 consecutive games with a point, 8-0-4. They only made the playoffs once in their 13 seasons. That was back in 09, and it was a four-game sweep against Detroit, but this guy has got this team and these players believing that they can make the playoffs again this season. And that's half the battle in the National Hockey League and any sport. Have your players believe in themselves. And that's what Columbus does night in and night out. You look at their team on paper, they're not star studded, but boy, oh boy, do they work hard. There's a shot block and a two-on-one for Montreal. Back the other way. Here's Brian. And he took a wrist shot that goes off a stick and out of play. And Borg with him took the shot. And it's up and out and into the netting. Well, Daniel Briere has struggled, struggled offensively. An uh, empty net goal is his only goal, but boy, oh boy, he makes a nice play. A great one-handed effort to get the puck up out of the zone. Uses his speed right here to be able to corral the puck as he almost skated by it. And this would have endeared him to the local fans and blasted the roof off of the Bell Center if he had been able to put that one in past Bobrovsky. But a nice play by Daniel Briere in his own zone. Closing in on 300 career goals, and you heard Francois Gagnon of RDS in the second intermission talk about he's going to be one of the guys that's needed to help fill the shoes if Max Pacioretty is indeed out for an extended period of time. No question. Uh, Daniel Briere is, I think he's better at the natural center position. I think that's more adept for him, but it's going to be interesting if you're right, if Pacioretty is out. Briere can step in and fill that offensive void that Pacioretty leaves. Completely different player than Pacioretty, but as far as being able to put points on the board and create plays, he still has that ability. We haven't seen it. We've seen it in little spurts this season, but he's going to need to have that consistent effort if Pacioretty is going to be out of the lineup. The guy sitting right beside him would like to see a little more offense as well. Uh, David Dayer named it a great play to Bork earlier in the period that would have the court just fanned on it, but it was a great setup. So David D'Arnais is still making the plays. He's just not getting rewarded. We need to see a little more play down deep from both guys like D'Arnais and Briere using the speed and score checks and creating turnovers, and that will help out in their offensive production as well. George's stretch pass gets by everybody, and Sergei Bobrovsky seeing red shirts closing in will hang on. Here's a good look at the 25-year-old Sergei Bobrovsky, who won 20 games as a rookie in 2010-2011. He was acquired from Philadelphia for a second-round pick and two fourth-round picks, and went on to win the Vesna Trophy, the second-best save percentage in the NHL last year, 932, six best goals against, of two even, and 21 wins. And a penalty call coming up here. This is going to be holding. Brandon Dubinsky not very happy, and he is voicing his opinion about he, what he thought of, of the call. On this number 17, minor penalty holding. So Montreal, one for three with a man advantage, has a chance to take the lead back. You can see Dubinsky drops his hand down, and he just pushes back. On Josh George's, and that's where the hold comes in. He really didn't like it. And here's a face-off win by David Dare. And this is a face-off win by Montreal. And who gets on the puck first? 
but it's the Columbus Blue Jackets. Good face-off win there by Eller, and Montreal controls the puck. Gallagher goes back and forth with Markov. He is pressured along the side boards, and given a dangerous shove. It looked like there from Johnson. And McKenzie is going to rag the puck a bit and send it in. The bigger man situation there. Johnson uh, outweighing Gallagher. Just, you're right, it did look dangerous, but they just pushed Gallagher right off the puck. Here's Gallagher undeterred to Eller. Eller back in feed for Galchenia. Got a puck hopped over his stick. Back for Markov. Markov towards the net. Rolling puck and Gallagher swats it just wide. And he's dumped again right in front of the net. Now in front is Eller. Subban now makes the move. Here's PK. Great feed shot and a save by Lebronski on Alex Galchenia. Great opportunity by Galchenyuk, and it's all created by P.K. Subban as he picks this puck up, a failed attempt of a clear, and he picks the puck up, and Galchenyuk did a nice sweet shot. I'll bet you if Galchenyuk had that a foot ahead of him, he would have got more on it and probably put it where he wanted to, but as he picks it up behind his back foot, he gets a nice sweet shot in a Bobrovsky, and Bobrovsky's able to hold on and not give up a rebound. Bobrovsky has played every minute so far this season for Columbus. His backup, Curtis Macklin, he probably won't play a whole lot this year. In front, and Isimov drifted a pass in there, and uh, bodies go crashing into the Montreal net. We've already seen one short-handed goal tonight, scored by Andre Markov. I like this play by Columbus. They just take the puck to the net a, a while short-handed. It's a smart play. They get the puck. They've got some good speed. Take it. Toss it to the net. See what happens. Possible penalty. If you get the deflection, you might get lucky and tip it in, or you may draw a penalty. Neither happened in that situation, but that's a good, smart play on a simple two-on-two. It needs him off to take this draw against Daniel Briere. One by Anisimov. He's been doing a lot of that tonight. Anisimov's a big guy. It's six foot four. He can lean on that stick, and he's done a great job in the faceoff circle for Columbus. Yeah, that's the Red Wings about him. He won nine of twelve against them on Tuesday night. Right, a board, soft play along the boards, but they managed to keep it deep. Out from behind the net, centering the tent, looking for Bork, and it comes free for Markov. Andre Markov skates it in, drops it off in the corner. Subban calls for it, keeps it in. And then goes back to Briere. Bork is out in front, so is DNA. Here's Daniel Briere. Tries to sidestep around two. Almost does. Still with it. Spins it back for DNA. Over to Markov. Markov zoom in with a blast. And Bobrovsky got the pad out. 15 seconds to go in the Montreal power play. That was probably their best chance right there. Well, maybe the Galchenyuk shot was good too. And here comes PK winding it up from his own zone, drops it off. But that pass was just out of the reach of Giancarlo. Dubinsky is out of the box, so big penalty kill for the Blue Jackets. 9.17 to go in the third period, and it's still tied. 3-3. Three, three. I like the work when I saw down low was Darnay and Briere with puck control. Danny Briere working the puck out of one corner behind the net. Excellent job creating that opportunity. And it was eventually with a big shot by P.K. Subban. But that's what Danielle Briere and David Dayarni need to do consistently. Cross carries the puck, drops it off to the trailer. Giazza had it poked free by Latestu. His slap shot over the net. Waiting for it is Pouliot, who keeps that puck inside the line. Two shots on that power play for Montreal. They're one for four tonight. Front, Diaz, Pouliot. Into traffic. Lekanic finds the loose puck. Here is Brandon Trust again. Quick shot off the stick of Giotti in behind the net. Ryan Murray off the boards, and finally Columbus is able to get a line change. Good second shift by the Canadians right off of their power play. Good opportunity in the power play. They come right back with the next shift, and that's such a big shift to keep the momentum going. Wins a great job down low, working the puck, keeping the puck in the Columbus zone. Michael Bourneval, who has scored his first career goal tonight. Works with Moen and Ryan White, the three of them all down the same side. Here's White with a shot. Off the leg into the corner. Bourneval. Angled off by Safard. Here comes Ryan Johansson. He's on the board tonight. 
for Columbus. Gets it deep and heads to the bench. Jared Tenorti. Fires it in there. Both teams using them. Both, all four lines, all players on the bench. Both teams are keeping the shift short. The energy is high. And McKenzie's shot goes off the stick of P.K. Subban and out of play. 3-3. You're watching the Canadians on TSN. We're going down the stretch. He has paid a price early in the game. He got clipped with a high stick, but there was no call on the play. And then Brandon Dubinsky absolutely wallpapers somebody bounces right back up. He gets smoked again down low by Como. He gets thwarted on an offensive opportunity there. And then big David Savard introduces himself to Brendan Gallagher. And that's Brendan Gallagher's game. And like I said, if anybody should be rewarded with a goal in this game, and at no better time, it's a game-winning goal. And Brendan Gallagher, he is a trooper and just doing what he normally does for the Montreal Canadiens. No points in his last two games, Raider, but not for lack of trying. Johnson with a quick shot from the near point. Whistles that one wide and play is whistled down as once again the net is off its moorings. As you look at Gallagher, the Calder Trophy finalist. It's interesting, interesting sitting there. Lars Eller has asked the... The coach adjusts, Gerard Glunk, assistant coach, for a little piece of paper, and then probably with his finger, he's drawing out some stuff down low, working plays, maybe face-offs on the bench. And it's, uh, it's part of Lars Eller's game. He's a thinker. He's been a fantastic player for the Habs this year, and now they're on the ice with the top line of the Habs. Let's see if they can get the go-ahead goal. Here's Brandon Tabinski. His wrist shot doesn't go far, but he stays with the play and follows that puck in behind the net. Here's Eller. Montreal needs to clear the zone on the delayed offside call. They do as Jack Johnson lugs the puck out. Johnson's first pass up to Dubinsky. His shot is steered aside by Gary Price. Boone Jenner with a couple of goals tonight. First two of his career. In after that loose puck behind the Montreal goal. Eller tries to lean on him and Jenner just skated away from him. Here's a shot, finds his way through it. A good save by Price. Here's Johnson now winding around. His shot off the leg and that just got a piece of the netting. And the faceoff will stay inside the blue line. As you look over at Gerard Gallant, one of the assistants of Michel Terry, former head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Gerard Gallant has got plenty of experience playing the line with Steve Eisenman and that not the tough guy role, but he would drop the gloves and protect his teammates. But as a goal story, does a great job with these young forwards. Coached the St. John Sea Dogs and won the Memorial Cup. He was also an assistant on the staff of the initial Columbus Blue Jackets season under. Do you remember who their first coach was? In 2000. No, 2000, 2001. Penalty call coming up here. It was Dave King. As a penalty call is coming up against Montreal. Six minutes to go, and Columbus is going to get a late power play attempt. Here is Brandon Trust. Tries to lean into Blake Como. Wisniewski, all stretch pass onto the tape there of Como. Here is hitting over the line. His pass up to Latestu instead of his reach, and it's touched by Markov. So Montreal's penalty killers are going to be called upon here. 5.46 to go. 3-3, Columbus power play when we come back. Terrible, uh, P.K. Subban reaches in to knock the puck away and Sean Collins lifts his stick and the stick bounces off. Watch Collins' stick underneath. He lifts Subban's stick up and in the process, it hits himself in the face. That is not a penalty. That's the second time in this game that P.K. Subban has been in the penalty box for non-calls. Earlier in the game, it was an elbowing call that was Replays indicated there was no elbow on Cam Atkinson. DK took a couple of third period penalties in the first game of the road trip against the Calgary Flames. They were not the best well, decisions by him, but certainly tonight, he's not getting the breaks. It's a, the referees are lucky that that replay was not shown on the big screen. Uh, they didn't like the last penalty against PK, and they definitely would not have appreciated that one. That was not careless at all by P.K. Subban. Columbus two for four with a man advantage. Mark Letestu goes back to Anisimov. Back to Letestu. He'll bank it around the boards, waiting for it is better to 
shooting his pressure, comes across to an eats him off. Into the middle, there's a shot by Atkinson. Boone Jenner's right in front, and it's deflected wide. The test to Atkinson, one time and he snapped it just over the glove of Price. Lacanis can't get there in time. Here is Atkinson. Over to Tootin. Better Tootin now. He'll drop it off and winding all the way around. There's a blast. Off the stick of Tootin and outside the line. Penalty killers get a chance to change for Montreal. Fresh power play unit coming out for Columbus. Great job by Columbus, especially Boone Jenner in front of Carey Price. And a couple of shots, Price was looking one way and Puck was going the other. Price working hard to find those point shots, but difficult. Difficult when you've got a player standing right on top of the big paint. Here comes Wisniewski, makes one move and then goes over to the veteran Umberger. Markov hard up the boards and it just gets past Johnson and down the ice. Well, Lars Eller and Travis Mullen, they, if they had taken off, they're a little tired on the late in the penalty kill shift. If they had taken off, they would have had an easy two on one. But they elected to go for the change. Great move by Bouillon, gets it to Bourneval, his shot, and Bobrovsky kicks that out. As Bouillon saw that long straight pass attempt by Wisniewski. And Bourneval doing some good work down low. In the remaining few seconds of this penalty to Subban, so the penalty killers do the job as Subban steps out of the box, and it's still tied. 3-3. Three, three. Here's Georges now. He'll step in there, takes the hit from McKenzie, and dumps it in. Wisniewski out from behind his own net, banks it off the boards. Corralled by Diaz. Center, McKenzie, into the corner he goes. Georges, back to get it. Diaz puts it up the boards. And this is Daniel Briere. Pass looking for Darnay, was behind him. He's gonna race after it against McKee. Subban at center. Slapped in by Bork. Montreal coming in on a three-game win streak. Trying to make it four tonight. Under three minutes to go. Pass in the middle for Dubinsky. Drops it off. And Como shot off a stick. Out of play. And the faceoff stays inside the Montreal blue line. Well, Carey Price did a great job in the penalty kill. And it wasn't necessarily stopping the puck. Watch as he's trying to look around Boone Jenner. He's trying to figure out, should I look low? And Jenner lifts his arms up. He's reaching, kind of waving a little bit. But he's doing a Jenner does a good job of making himself wide. And when he does that, it forces Price to look underneath his arms rather than trying to look up and over the shoulders. And Carey Price was popping back and forth trying to get the puck. And that's what you call the goaltenders. You see the goaltenders. That's what you hear the coaches say when they're battling to find pucks. And that's what Carey Price did on that penalty kill. I'm sure Richards will be raving about Jenner's game tonight. A young rookie. He is a big kid. And he's back out of the ice, gets that puck deep. Subban is back to get it. Atkinson pressured him, but he puts it up the boards. This goes down the ice for icing with 2.16 left in regulation. P.K. Subban, I'm sure, is a little bit frustrated. You know the referees keep an eye on Subban because he is such a, a, a big hitter and he can be such a big part of the game. And unfortunately for PK in this game, he's been on the bad, on the wrong end of a couple of poor calls. But Subban is always, always making his presence felt in the game. And this game, he's got a couple of beautiful assists, along with a couple of penalties. Montreal has called a timeout with some tired legs on the ice in the late stages of this third period for a defensive zone faceoff. So Terrian. Knowing how good Columbus has been good with the face-offs tonight is going to give the guys a rest. And, and sometimes it's not always about the centerman on face-offs. And when you know you are struggling on face-offs, such as the Habs are this evening, it's up to the wingers and the defensemen to step in and help out on face-offs. And we showed earlier in the period how Dayarne won a draw, yet Columbus jumped in behind Dayarne to get the puck and take the puck out of the zone. That's where the centers need help. I can remember playing when my center was struggling. And I played with some good centers. Dee Carpenter was probably the best face-off man I ever played with. But when he was struggling, he'd look over and say, hey, step in, get this one. Step in behind him, help out. That's what the Habs need to do. Eller 
against Johansson, wins it cleanly. David Savard with a wrist shot. And here's Gallagher, off the boards, out to center. Got back just inside the Montreal line. Subban got it right back to Gallagher. Here comes Lars Eller, cuts it in the middle. Puck rolled away from him. And Subban will back up. Makes one move and heads north. Drops it off for Gallagher. Gallagher's wrist shot. Big rebound for Galchenyuk. And he pokes it wide. Thomas Placanich meets it on his back end. Keeps it deep for Nikitin. That line will change. And Nikita Nikitin starts out. Turned back by Thomas Placanich. Columbus going east and west and then in. Boone Jenner first into the floor. Jack keeps it deep. Makes the play around Diaz. Now he's got the puck. Banks it back to the line. There's the shot. Wisniewski with a drive right on. And Price makes another save with 1.16 to go. When we talk about Marion Gabrick not being in the game and who's going to step up in the offense, and Carey Price has seen plenty of Boone Jenner. And once again, Boone Jenner on the ice making the plays down low and here's Jenner down low working with Diaz winning the battle nice bank pass to create the shot Dubinsky in front Jenner going to the front of that Atkinson there this is the top line the number 38 in white is in his first year in the National Hockey League and he has stepped up in place of Marion Gabrick and done a fantastic job as we get Columbus calling their timeout with an offensive zone faceoff but Dave, we talk about winning faceoffs and players have to help out. Well, when you lose draws as clean as the Habs have been doing in this period, especially the last defensive zone faceoff, it's almost impossible to ask anybody to help. The only thing you can say there is, all right, guys, block the shot because it's going straight back to the point, and you know it's coming straight to the net. So it'll be interesting to see how this develops. The faceoff on the opposite side of Perry Price is to his left. The last faceoff was to his right. This might be in favor of the Montreal Canadiens. With Columbus now in the Eastern Conference, tonight is the first of three meetings this season between these two. First of two here at the Bell Center. Columbus is back in Montreal in March. Thomas Buchanan's directing traffic for this key faceoff yet again inside their own blue line. This one against Brandon Dubinsky. And it's pulled back towards Price. Here is the captain, Gianta, down the right side. Goes into the middle for Placanich. His shot scores! Thomas Placanich! Almost out of nowhere, Placanich gets one by Bobrovsky, and it's 4-3. Well, Sergei Bobrovsky got caught cheating on this play, and he knows it. He was moving over to his right when that puck went left. But this all starts with a face-off win, wrap around, and it's an instant three on two. The puck comes to the middle, and it actually goes off the foot of Ryan Murray, and that's where Bobrovsky moved to his right. On the live look, when you're watching, it looked like he was cheating, figuring that the pass was going to go from mechanics to crust, but it actually hits Ryan Murray and it catches Bobrovsky moving to his right. What a huge goal. And it comes off of a defense's own face-off win. And they catch Columbus pushing. That, yes, the goal score. They catch Columbus pushing and trying to get in on the fourth check. And it's a three-on-two from center ice, which results in a humongous goal. All right, so let's see what Columbus has got. Here's Johansson barging in. He is hauled down, and it's going to be a tripping call here against the Canadians. So just as Columbus has done all night long, they answer back with a little pushback. And now Johansson has drawn a penalty, and they are going to finish this game with a man advantage. They'll likely, I would imagine, pull Bobrovsky as well. We're looking at a six on four here. Well, Josh Georges has no choice. Great job by Johansson to protect the puck as he pulls it to his right, which forces Josh Georges to go in and trip him as we get another look at the cannon's goal. I don't think that went off of him. It looked like I think Sonny Bobrovsky was just cheating on that one. It looked like it went. You're right. At that one, it looked like he was going to pass it and quickly rolled the wrist. And yeah, on, Bobrovsky on the other replay, it looked, it looked like, like it, it bounced did. off him. Bottom line is Bobrovsky is on the bench. Six on four. Johansson to take the draw again against Placanis. What's D 
Diaz stepping in to help here off the draw on the back side with Dubinsky. Diaz trying to step in, in behind the center. Now watch Diaz, he's going to try to step in behind Dubinsky. Dubinsky comes in. 42 seconds to go. He pulls it back. Johnson eats the puck, gets it along the boards for Johansson. Here's Dubinsky. Watch out, centers it. Jenner's there. Price is down. Puck is loose. There's a shot by Johansson. It goes off the leg and into the corner. Back to the line for Johnson. Jack Johnson. Back to Ryan Johansson. Slap pass. Across. Loose. And it bounces over the stick to the line. And out. Crust. Empty net. Here's Blakanitz. That will do it. Thomas Blakanitz with his second goal in about a minute. And Montreal is going to win its fourth straight. Well, the Montreal Canadiens do a great job down low. Diaz blocks the shot, but watch this play. Watch Cam Atkinson. He gets this puck. Why he did not shoot that puck is beyond me, but he tries to pass it out in front. And what happens? It gets taken away, and it goes down the ice, and Blakanitz scores into the empty net. That was a great set up to Atkinson who was wide open and he didn't think, he didn't get his head up, didn't think he had the shot and Thomas Placanitz is rewarded after winning a couple of big face-offs with not only what now stands to be the game-winning goal but also the empty netter to make it five. Odd decision there by Como to sweep the puck all the way back down into his own zone on the face-off win but that is two short-handed goals tonight by the Canadians. Final few seconds to keep into the corner. That is it. Montreal saw a three goal lead get away, but they get back to back late goals by one of their veteran leaders and a couple of key saves from Price. And it is 5 3 over Columbus. Final. Great hockey game by both teams. The Columbus Blue Jackets just showed everybody in Montreal that they are for real. A great pushback. But give Montreal credit, they were able to stay with their game and they were able to score the late goal by Placanitz on one of the very few face-off wins in the defensive zone. But Montreal Canadiens in behind once again, Carey Price with a huge two points. They come home off the four-game road trip over the five-game homestand with a win over the Blue Jackets. Lots of post-game reaction coming your way next.